Goeiemorgen, good morning, and to my beautiful wife, baie goeiemorgen vir jou ook. <laughs> Alright, what are we talking about this morning? Um, we're going to talk about things, fun things to do in New Zealand, but we're going to try and stick to the stuff that we've already done, because we can't really talk about stuff that we haven't done. Um, so yeah. Yeah, let's say good morning to Corbus, Tal, Elana. Um, and anybody else who slipped in that I couldn't see there, but good morning to you all. Um, we've done a few few road trips in New Zealand. I think uh, we're trying to do as much as possible. Um, with the lockdown, we're not going very far. We're just doing the garden routes all around the garden. And the, okay, we can say that where we live in Taranga, we're very central to the, in the North Island. Mm. Um, so there are a lot of beautiful places in and around Taranga. Um, you can drive two or three hours to the one side, two or three to the other side, and then you're in places that are very beautiful. So we're actually very lucky to be living in yeah. Taranga. And the most of the places we are going to tell you is stuff that you can actually do on um, within a day, like day trips. You, you don't really need to go and sleep over except yeah. the one in Wellington that we want to tell you about, because that's quite a drive from us. But most of the stuff is within, some of them is within an hour. Some of them is, worst case scenario, about two hours from us. So Yeah. Okay, you can start with um, Rotorua. How far is Rotorua from us? I first want to tell you guys this. All right. Back in South Africa, we, when I was a, a kid, we, we did the butt cost thing um, with, with my, my parents. We, we drove anywhere. We had to have this cookbook with the eggs in and the mince balls and all those type of stuff. And, and, the, and, the, <laughs> and the sandwiches that got soggy with the, <laughs> with the tomato on there. And then somewhere along the line, you stopped and everybody had this and you did the flask of coffee. And I still remember it was extremely sweet. I don't know why they made it so, so sweet. It has to be like that. It has to be like that. Okay. So that's a <laughs> ritual. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that, that is what, what we did back in South Africa. And as things changed, you could not stop next to the road anymore. We just had to uh, get there as fast as you can and stop at the wimpy thing. So, but we've gone back to that days now. So... Yeah, we now we nice. now stop again next to the road. We go. We out. make a road trip of everything. Oh, Benny yeah. has to go to seat lines in Auckland. <clears throat> I go with him. Then we stop halfway. Even when she doesn't go with me, I, I take my yeah. flask and flask coffee and, and um, sandwiches yeah. or whatever we want to do, and then stop there at the Kananaki Gorge mm. and just like a little breakfast there, yeah. and then go all the way. The one thing that works in, in your favour here is the. Um, speed limit is about 80 kilometers to 100 kilometers and most of the areas where it's even 100 kilometers you can't travel 100 kilometers because the road does not allow that the roads are very windy here so um, traveling that road is 100 kilometers oh, will probably be you'll write yourself off somewhere so we just take it slow going back going nowhere slowly as they used to say <laughs> in South Africa and then we stop often and have a butt course um, we don't do the egg thing anymore luckily <laughs> They still have the the the, 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 the tubies and, and the flask. Yeah, so or wraps. We like wraps. Yeah, wraps. wraps it's so. very easy. And even if we go with friends, we take a, a pot okay. Yeah. What are we going to talk about? Okay, tell them about Rotorua. Rotorua. That's the thermal activity. You haven't seen anything like this in South Africa. I know there was a bit of um, a, a discussion this this week that South Africa is just as beautiful as New Zealand, blah, blah, blah. But the thermal, I haven't seen in any other country in the world. This is where the 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 the, the, the magma or, or the lava of the volcanoes is so near to the crust that water comes out boiling, that mud comes out boiling. That you drive in the fields and they've got these vents of steam coming out. I mean, it's just it's something else, especially on on a cooler morning. If it's quite cool, it's quite weird to drive down these valleys and you see the steam yes. rising. Out of every crack and I remember when we came here in 2016 and we drove um, down to, I don't know where we went, mm. Wellington side or whatever, by Pass, but Rotorua. All the sheep were lying in the fields there with the steam coming out. I was thinking, yeah. you know, it must be so nice and hot for them to live in that field. I, I, I actually think what I want to do on that, I mean, also what I want to do on that, I want to take a chicken and go and boil it in one of these things. Just to show that it's really that hot, because you can see it's boiling, boiling, boiling hot. There's either water or coloured water or mud that's boiling like that. 
and that is 40 minutes drive from us so yeah yeah and then also of course you have the maori villages oh yeah the three of them um, yeah that's the touristy yeah. stuff to do but it's really worth your while yeah. to do it um if you get i'm, to I'm just looking at it. what she wrote down but i can't read no, i made a list otherwise we're just gonna <laughs> I can't talk read a lot of nonsense <laughs> Okay, then also in Rotorua is the cable car. Yeah, the cable car is the gondolas. Yeah, up to, and then you do those. Um, oh, yeah, you come down with the luges. Yes. Yeah. That's a little, small little car. Um, everybody who ever comes to me, I tell them, go and do the luge. It's, it's, it's one of those things. Even really for, nice. Even for the, um, the, the bigger guys. The kids, the moms, the dads, yeah. everyone enjoys it. The ones over 18. Yeah, so. there's a fast track and a slow, slow track. track. And so on. It's, it's really fun. And then you also have the 3D art gallery in Rotorua, which is oh, yeah, yeah. really fun to do with your kids. And presumably if you miss Africa, there's a place that's got lions and tigers and all these wild animals there. That yeah, we haven't, been, I haven't there. been there. Fairy, fairy something? I don't know. I don't know. I remember. But I still want to go there one day, but I haven't been there yet. So. Yeah. And then also in Rotorua, they've got this mini golf place. Um, oh, yeah. where you can Where you play mini golf with rabbits flying all over the golf course it is so much fun you're allowed to touch them you're just not allowed to pick them up mm. but um they just lie there where you're supposed to put your ball in they yep. lie these <laughs> it is really funny especially for the kids yes. and if you do it at night they've got all this fairy lights it's really magical it looks very magical let's put up a video somewhere about that so. yeah but that's a really fun mm. thing to do in Rotorua. and then of course you've got the redwoods yep. And if, you, if you're a bike guy, not a motorbike, bike guy, then the Redwoods, um, also with the gondolas, they've got this massive track going down there. I think it's absolutely scary to go down there. I saw some videos come out of the latest, I think it's Crankworks, things that I had just before lockdown there. Gee whiz, I, I would never even think it's humanly possible to go through those type of things, but people go and they do ramp their bikes like crazy. Yep. Okay. And, and no deaths. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the Redwoods, uh, the last few times that we yeah. went, we just walk through the woods. We don't do the, um, mm. what is that, night tour. We haven't done the night tour. We've done it if, at night, but we walk through the woods. Yeah, let's explain out. to them what we talk about the night tour. If you've got this thing where you get into a tree with a boardwalk, and then they've got boardwalks or little plank walks between the it's trees. It's like tree walking. Tree walking yeah. up. So you pay quite a lot of money to get up there, and then you just go walk on in the in the tops of the trees. It's uh, quite scary. It's a bit I'm boring. afraid of height. <laughs> it's actually, actually, for for me personally, myself, I've done that once. I won't do it again. I've walked at the bottom, and I think I just see much more at the bottom. So, and then we went that one night with the lights. Yes, and then so, the last time that we went there, when Zon and Alzon with mm. with us, they also have this adventure track. Yeah, but through um. Yeah. It's a bit further on in the Redwoods and it's much more personalized. They only take one or two or yeah, three or like four people. Yeah, it's like one guide group. that takes you mm. through the trees. Yeah, the one is swinging through the trees and then the other one is walking. And I don't yeah. know, they've got a lot of stuff there, but it looks really fun. That's about $80 or something. Yeah, like it's yeah. not that expensive. It's not that expensive. Really you think like you do a heck of a lot of stuff. Yeah. And then, okay, we how far is Taupo from us? Taupo is about an hour and a half slow drive. So... You don't go that fast to top. Isn't it more like two hours? Yeah, probably two hours. Yeah. Yeah. But um, they've got the hookah falls there, which is hookah beautiful. Falls. Um, the hookah falls is the in New Zealand. Isn't it the what? It's the largest one or the biggest fall? It's in the biggest fall or volume. Volume. The amount of water goes through there. It's absolutely a heck of a lot. I forgot the figures, but it's magic it's really tons and tons of water going through that that cap in the wall there um, it comes from lake taupo which is a massive reservoir really in, even in south african terms it's massive 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 and this water comes through the crack there and it runs off and it drops down a waterfall but the color of the water while it goes through there why change this color like that it's just absolutely it's wild. Yeah. it is beautiful um yeah. and then we've done the jet boats at the hookah falls mm. twice now you can't miss it. It's, it's something a, that you have yeah, to do. But take a, a 5.7 liter V8 Chef motor, put it in there, put it on a jet drive in a very small boat, and they just go full throttle. The and whole the beautiful boat. thing is they drive all the way, or ride, what do you do with the boat? Ride it all the way up to the where the hookah falls comes yeah. down, 
and the last time we did the guy actually took us almost underneath that water mm. it is beautiful the, the problem when, when the water, water falls over and it reaches the other water it makes a lot of bubbles so mm. the jet motor loses traction totally loses traction into those bubbles so it comes at a massive speed and then the engine just it's running it's nothing yeah. happens and mm. then as, as it drifts out of this and it catches more solid pieces of water again then you go again so yeah a lot of fun uh, yes kids can go on the jet boat yeah kids can go but it's very fast. It's really very fast. I don't know if kids will really. I don't think kids maybe joy. from five upwards. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But, but these guys drive. Eh? They they actually go flat out. There will be a tree, and they go flat out to the tree. And the way that the jet boats go, they can just go within inches of that tree. They can just so pass the thing. Yes. Um, we actually hit. What did we eat? Did we Geese? eat something? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, we eat something on the way there. It's so feathers that it was gone. Boop. Really fun thing to do. Yeah. Okay, and then in winter time we went to um Faka Papa. Oh yeah, yeah. Faka Papa, yeah. Faka Papa. We stayed in a little town. And I'm not swearing, please. Called Awakuni. Um and then we went skiing yeah. for the weekend. We only skied for one hour on the first uh, day. I, I doubt if you can call it ski. <laughs> we were only falling on the first hour and then we stopped. So, so I think when we go back there this year, I'll just I, go. I believe I'm going to take some lessons. Are you? I'm <laughs> just going to watch everyone. <laughs> okay. I, I think you, you, we bought a pass for two days. Yep. Um, but if you only use it for one day, then you can just go back and you, of course, you pay daily. You, you mm. don't pay for Otherwise, for the days. clothes. Yeah. But we, you, you get a little like a. Like a card, like a pass. Yeah. Yeah, a part, card that you put some in your clothing and as you come to the gates, the gates recognize the pass by one another invisible 5G ray, so you don't need your little hat there. But this thing then, then it opens the doors and you can either take a gondola up to, what is it, about one, two different stations that you can go up to. But it's beautiful when you're up oh, yeah. there, oh, yeah. um, because everyone, the beginners are um, skiing on the one side mm. and the sun is really mm. bad. I'm just um, but on the other side, it's all the people that knows how to ski. So, and, and when you're sitting in the restaurant on the top there, you can watch them all go up and come down. It's amazing. But I'm too scared. I'll just watch next time. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> but let me tell you a little bit about Abakuni where we lived. It's a very small town, and um, but I think I don't think in summertime it's that huge of a deal. But in winter, it's absolutely beautiful. It was snowing when we were there, and we lived in this small little cottage with a fireplace only in the living room. I actually thought we were going to mm. die of cold, but that house is I don't know how they do it, but I, I think they've got like a central kind of thing that well, runs through a, the house. A, 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 like a extractor fan in right above the this little stove because the house is basically built in two long sections the one section at the back has got all the rooms in and then the front section is quite open got a kitchen sitting room and the stove there so they've got a, a duct from the one side drawing heat, heated air over to the other side and i just love making the fire there goodness me i mean yes by the time they woke up in the morning it was so warm in that, that house we, we walked around in our summer yeah, yeah in t-shirts so, while stuff. it was snowing outside a physical snow on the ground yeah. so but it, that is really something that yeah. you have to do. And the town has got so many nice, small little restaurants. Um, very cozy. Oh, yeah. It looks kind of like, I think it looks in Switzerland or something. What was that, that place we, we went to eat that night? We had a lot of meat. No, I can't remember. But it was like a, um, like, like a Swiss type of mountain inn. Heavy wood and dark wood. And, and they had an a, a indoor swimming pool. Or heated swimming pool. It was actually quite lovely. We went up skiing the day and then we came back and lay in this pool yes, afterwards. That, that was really nice. nice. Yeah, that yes. was nice. Yeah. So. Oh, yes. Okay. <coughs> and then um, I just want to tell um, what's her name? Anel van Skullbreak. She says her daughter loves speed. So she will definitely enjoy the jet boats. You have to take her. Yeah. <laughs> and then David, yep. Uh, Snow Planets, that's in Auckland. So I'll rather drive to uh, Kuri and go for my ass off there than drive all the way to Auckland <laughs> for my ass off there, so. Okay, and then stuff that we did, um, oh, I just want to tell them about the Wellington Museum. Oh, yeah. We haven't done a lot of sightseeing in Wellington yet. We were watching a documentary the other day on mm. Wellington and it looks amazing, so we definitely have to go back there. 
But the one thing that we did that's really it's, um, stuck in my mind all the time is that um, the Papa Museum. Oh, yeah. That is the one place that you really have to mm. visit. It is amazing. They've got these huge um, life-like sculptures, mm. but it's huge. It's like five or six times um, the, the, the normal human. size. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of some of the war they fought in the Second World War against the Turks. Um, they sadly lost that... that um, I said, that battle, specific battle they lost there. But these sculptures all comes from real people that was in that uh, fight there. And um, these people have been recreated and, and it's lifelike, absolutely lifelike. It's just three, four times bigger than life. It actually kind of touches your soul when yeah. you walk through there. It is amazing. You can actually go Google it just to have an mm. get an idea of what it looks like. It is amazing. So, but if you if you're on Wellington, it's for free. Um, you've got no reason not to go and see that. So yeah, but there's a lot of other stuff in Wellington that I still want to go see. Um, okay, and then we um, when we talk a little bit about going up north from um, Taranga, those places were all south. Um, of course, we've got the Karanaki Gorge that oh, we yeah, talked yeah. about, where we stop mm. for picnics all the time. That was one of the oldest gold or the gold field in. Um, in New Zealand, they they're not very far from there at Waii, they've, they've got a gold mine now. But that was, they, they dug the hills up there for gold. And presumably, the river that runs through Karanaki Gorge was yellow at a certain time uh, because of all the stuff that they had in there. And the cyanide killed everything in the river. But once they stopped doing that, the, the river returned to its pristine condition that's, that's in now. And you can go and walk up there, walk through all these mine shafts and see all the old diggings and everywhere that they work down there. Um, or you can take your bike and drive from Waii all the way to Waikino. Yes, we've done so, that a few times. Yeah. That's It's a lovely drive. Yeah. Um, and then when you get to Waikino, yeah, you right. can have... Yeah, right. You can have... They've got a little station restaurant there where you can have a little breakfast. Yeah. We do that sometimes. And then you can ride back on your bicycle or you can put your bike on, on the train, the train yeah. and then ride um, back mm. on the train. I think it's 20, 20 15 or $20. $15 or something. Or something yeah. Yeah. Totally uh, we haven't done that yet, but I want to mm. do that just for the experience. Yeah. Um, okay. From, from, from Karagaki Gorge, I think probably you'll, you'll go down Coromandel. Coromandel has got... Coromandel I can talk to about hours, yes. um, but that's just something to see. Coromandel is one of those places... We love going there, and I think as soon as lockdown is over and the weather allows us, I would really want to try and do a last trip for summer down there. Yeah. Um, Kuramandal is a, is a few small little towns. Yeah. Um, it's a peninsula out this, of yes. the island. A few little towns on the one side, a few little towns on the other side. But they got all stuff from, from like water beaches there, um, <coughs> to the Riedel Grove, to Kuramandal Town, which got the little, um, little train in there. They got a little train for... When another sculptor, I can't remember his name. They call it the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> it's beautiful. Eiffel Tower. Yes. It's a very nice train, right? It's open, so you can see all the bushes, mm. and um, it's quite high, yep. but it's not scary. So, and the, no, kids, can, scary. the kids will also love it. kids that. also love it. It's not a high speed thing, but it's, it's something mm. that you got to see, and then they take you up to the very top and they offload you there, and you can walk on this platform and they tell you a bit more about. But the big thing that caught me up top there is, is the is the, the view. views. It's absolutely amazing views from up top. There. And it's really worth worth the money. I think. How long is that ride? It's about. It's at least an hour busy up and down. Isn't if it's not longer. If it's not longer. Yeah, yeah it's really so, worth it. Um, and then also Cathedral Cove. Cathedral Cove. You can you can go by boat. I would suggest go by boat if you don't like walking. It's quite a long way from. From high heat to walk I would suggest all the walk way. to Cathedral Cove, even if it's a long we did it the walk, first time. walk, but it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful to walk there. And then you can go come back with the mm. ferry. But at Cathedral Cove, you can snorkel. It's the most beautiful yeah. place to snorkel. And the ocean is very still, it's very quiet there. Mm. The water is beautiful and like a turquoise, uh, turquoise color. And they've got these caves that you can um, snorkel into. Oh, yeah, yeah. We swim yeah. into the caves. It's, it's underwater caves in, in when the tide's high and it's basically open mm. when it's the tide's low. Some of them you've got to snorkel and then get out and walk 
inside the cave the first time that you can get out of the water and walk on a little beach inside a cave it's quite weird but it's yeah there. beautiful um, and then of course kayaking you can yeah. go you can do a lot thanks to everybody who wishes us a wonderful uh, easter i see a lot of that popping up here as well and then yeah, anthony said fun. he was at the hot water beach when he arrived here first time now hot water beach is quite weird and one of these places you, you need to look at the tides before you go best time is low tide then you go to this little pinnacle of rock sticking out there in the sand you just remember to pay your parking pay your parking walk across the beach to this pinnacle of rock and then you you dig yourself a hole there and this hole falls up with hot water or sometimes even boiling hot water so just watch out don't stick your your, your foot into something that can take your skin off so ah they do yeah. this every morning uh, we high tide, everything flattens and i think we must tell them a little bit about camping in new zealand we went camping um, at Hot Water Beach the one time, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we've been to a few places, mm. but the camping sites in New Zealand, if you go to a top 10, we've, um, I think we've only visited top 10, so, oh, no, no, the last one we, we went to wasn't the top 10, the okay. one in Rotorua, but anyway, the top 10 camping sites are beautiful, um, the bathrooms, ablution blocks is just something out of this world. Mm. When you walk in there in the morning, they've got these um, cloths lying there on the basins, clean cloths for you, like washing cloths. Uh, every time you go in, there's new fresh mm. ones there. The toilets are so clean. The bathroom is very clean. The kitchens are amazing. Um, they even have cutlery and pots and pans and everything that you need so you don't even have to have your own we mm. all, always have our own but you don't need it got gas um stoves uh yeah stove to, to, the, to the guys who've never been to a camping site in new zealand or those still stuck in south africa it's not the traditional camping ground in south africa with only ablution blocks they've got fully kitted kitchens i'm talking fully kitted kitchens mm. massive kitchens with um, rows and rows of of gas stoves and kettles and microwaves, microwaves and uh, ovens you can basically do a five-star meal there every night if you want to and, and they've got it like a dining room where yeah. you can sit and eat and if you step outside except the dining room where there's a television and everything mm -hmm. else and there's normally pool tables as well yeah it's like a recreational yeah. wall and outside most of these places has got gas barbecues yeah all of them so have not you know, they don't like the fact that these africans want to start the fire everywhere that's quite scary for them but they've got gas barbecue, so if you really want to do something um, barbecue, you can do that on the, on the gas barbecue outside, and then just wash your stuff on the inside because it's yeah, they've got hot everything. Water. They've got um, even your uh, the wash fridges. Up. Tell them about the fridges. Oh, you, you, they've got fridges there. So what you do is you put your stuff in with your name on. They've got little stickers lying around there, so you just write your name on and stick it on your groceries that's in the fridge, and then no one will take it. Let's it. Um, and you, they've got all the cleanup stuff, the uh, dish cloths, everything. everything. So you don't need it. anything. Mm. You can just go camping. Yeah. It's very, very nice. Okay, let's talk a little bit about paella. Um, and I was just saying that she probably can start camping here. Oh, yes. I stopped camping in South Africa mm. due to what's happening there. And we restarted here. And I promise it's one of the best things. I should have done it when we came here. Yeah. So we bought a caravan that first week. So... Yeah, no, uh, we really Paya. Paya is about how far from Auckland? That's about three hours drive. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful drive up all north, the way up there. All the way up north. Yes. So. Um, Paya is actually the place where the Treaty of Waitangi was signed That's all right. those years ago. Yeah. But it is a beautiful little place. It's um, it's like a, it kind of makes me feel like... A bit of, uh, uh, bit of Margaret yeah but of Margaret um but also something on its own it's called bay of islands actually the, the area is called bay of islands Bay is just the town there it's got how many islands 200 140 or something. something you can go on a boat we did that yeah. and then they drive um do you drive a boat no, or ride a boat you're right go on a boat ride <laughs> Then they so take I don't take you, up fishing. They take you around all of these islands. I think they take you to 140. How many did we visit? Uh, I can't we remember. We just visit island after island after island. Small ones, yeah. big ones with houses on. Yeah, some is Amazing. tiny. Some of them are big islands. And the one that's got a rock and you drive through this rock. But actually it's done really it about three times of us. really nice to do. It yeah. is really nice to do. And it wasn't that expensive. Right? No, that it was wasn't. The thing. 
for that size, it's a massive boat. It's a massive boat that they take you on. And for that size of boat, what the... Pay, we paid something like a hundred dollars or so. I think so, yeah. yeah. And it's for, is it four hours or something? It yeah, four or five long. hours, yeah. yeah. We can yeah. even get off at, at Russell. Russell's little town on the other side. Um, as this peninsula has got massive lakes or massive estuaries going through this, the, the two towns are on opposite, opposite sides of each other. It's about five kilometers. But to get to them, you've got to go quite a way up and then take the ferry across that side. But there's a little passenger ferry running between the two. They, even, uh, they would have allowed us to get off at the one and give us tickets for the passenger ferry to get back to Paya at the end of the day, which we didn't do so. Yeah, Russell is beautiful. That was the first town in New Zealand. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a very historic little town. Yeah. There's not much to do there. We um, we slept there for one night, mm. but all the um, coffee shops in that closes at about three or four. Yeah. And so there's not, a, not so much to do. In the That's evenings, a, they've, got restaurants. The they've got restaurants where you can eat them, so. quite expensive. So I think we had fish and chips there. Oh, yeah, it was quite yeah, nice. Fish and chips, which was very yeah. nice, yeah. Anthony's saying uh, Fangarai is just as beautiful. I fully agree. Yes. Um, the waterfalls at Fangarai, that was absolutely stunning. So absolutely That's the stunning. other thing. We haven't been out to the heads. He says, especially going through the heads, we haven't been on, on, the, on, no, out to, on, the, on the ocean yet. There, no, so. we haven't. It's yeah. also something that something we Something we do. look forward to doing. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, and then we went all the way up to Cape Ringa. Now, Cape Ringa, that's where the, the most, most, most northern point. They've got yeah. a lighthouse there and a heck of a lot of wind. Goodness yes. me, that's where they make wind in New Zealand. We went on a little tour and mm. um, they take you on a 4x4 four four bus. It's a huge bus. We had a lovely driver as yeah. well. Um, then we went, they drive. We went up the 90 mile beach. On the, we drove on the, beach on the beach for about 60, 70 kilometers. Yes. And then we drove into a river all the way to massive sand dunes that gave us uh, bodyboards. We came down with bodyboards on the sand dunes and you run a part of the river. Um, it was actually quite, quite fun. <laughs> it was just a cold day. Actually. It was yeah. cold, yeah. So, so the ones that got wet were yeah, so lucky. I, I just had my one you leg wet. That wet yes. So I was all right. But some of the other guys just went, kept on going down, going down. And, oh, really? Also, wet. it's something that you have to do mm. if you ever have the opportunity. Yeah. It's really. You can worth take it. your own vehicle and try and drive the 90 yeah, mile beach, but, but uh, it must really be a good 4x4. Four four and it, I that. think it's more fun just with the. Oh, yeah. Because he tells you all about the. He is Maori, the mm. guy. So and it was actually cheap. It was it something was, like $60. Yeah. Plus, they gave us a meal at the end. Um, we gave us coffees, they gave everything yeah, else. We had ice everywhere. cream. Yeah. He stopped, yeah. He stops at these small little Maori villages where he knows the people, where you can then buy ice cream or stuff. And he tells you a little bit more about the history of the Maori mm. and their culture. So yeah. it's really interesting to to go on mm. that tour. It's really interesting. So. And then, all, uh, of course, you stop at the lighthouse. Um, it is beautiful, very mm. windy, but it's really something to see. Um, what was funny is um, halfway up there, you only have cell phone reception. Yeah, you lose, you lose yeah. it after a while. They, do, they don't have any cell phone reception. Mm. They don't have any, there's no cables, yeah. no telephone lines, nothing. The dry like, actually shows you says, this house here is the yeah, last one. It's the last one. It's and amazing. They, go that yeah. way. they do have uh, satellite phones with them if you are feeling unsafe and anything would happen. They, yeah. would, they would call. Up base. that side, it's it's. I think it's only Maoris mm. that live there. The, the one thing that's interesting, we haven't done that. Um, people get taken to Cape Ringa at the lighthouse and then they walk back on 90, 90 mile, mile beach. beach all the way back. It's a five day trip or something like yeah. this. So, and then these drivers, they, they learn to know who's on the road, who's walking, and they would by pointing out when this people started and how far they've gone and so on. So, quite interesting that way around. I can't see myself walking that far. So, yeah, but it's really interesting. All right. Wrapping this up, um, we've got about a minute left. I think there's still a lot to see. I, um, no, I don't think it. I know, I, I know it. there's still a lot to see. <laughs> there's a lot of places to go. I know some of you have had other places that you have seen. Uh, don't stop exploring. New Zealand has got so much more to see. So much more places. Just as we think, oh, we've seen everything in the area. Something new pops up. And you don't need to go to malls. You don't need to go to big markets. We do that as well. But there is so much more. You can actually just take your car, park at the place. There's a lot of places that just shows track. And then you can walk down there. 
it's safe enough to stop your vehicle there and just walk. Yeah. You, you, we've got tons of waterfalls around here. We've got one in Fakatani, just around the corner from me, it's a massive waterfall. Um, just in front of Rotorua, this is the three big ones I can think of. Um, going to the other side of the Kaimais, the Kaimais is our, our local um, mountain ridge here. Uh, just going that side of the Kaimais, there's just as much waterfalls. Always, and all of these has got places where you can stop, park your car, get out, walk. So, you do that. Yeah. I just want to say before we end, I don't know who, um, if you saw that little ad that we put on or the post that we made about the trip around the world dinner journey that we yep. we're gonna do what we decided to do is in honor of all the countries that's really struggling now during this um corona COVID 19 thing um we just want to honor all those countries so what we do is every saturday you have a little dinner and um, we will tell you on a monday which country is next this saturday coming we've got japan on the list so then um if you want japan. you can dress up the idea is not to go shopping or not to make it difficult. Just use whatever you have. Just improvise a little bit and make it fun. Now, don't eat bats, please. <laughs> you can do that if you want to, if you can find it. So you dress up, you um, set your table, Japanish kind of, mm. and then just make a meal in honor of Japan. Um, so every Monday we will tell you where we're stopping next. And then um, that Saturday, that is the that is the theme for your, for your dinner. Yeah. So, so if you all join us join, now, we will post your pictures post your afterwards. Pictures. Let's just make it a little bit fun. I don't know how long lockup's still going to be, but we don't have to stop when lockup's over. We can still just continue. Yeah. So yeah. I hope you will all join in and, and do that with us. Mm. And from tomorrow on 30 Minutes with Jan, we're starting to speak to people about their, um, their specific areas that they're living. So tune in every day before the time. We'll tell you what area we're going to discuss on the next day. So as soon as this is finished, um, somewhere along the line, ads will start running on the next area. Um, we're going to do a bit South Island, a bit North Island, um, just to give you an idea what New Zealand is all about. And we're going to talk to South Africans living there. Like, we're going to talk to them and, and they're going to tell you what their experiences is, not my experiences. Because if I go into a little town, I look at all the wow things. So we're going to talk about what them, it's like, what it's like to really live there their kids in the school where do they get their boulevards and everything <laughs> else so all right guys and girls it's time for us to love you and leave you um, enjoy your lockup down there in south africa and new zealand um we've been winning this fight really so guys and girls thanks a lot for listening every morning to us and do good stay safe and wash your hands bye-bye